you have an argument, you go to the pub. But if you had a shit day at work, you go to the pub. You want to see your mates, you go to the pub. So it just like kind of, every single thing just kind of leads to the pub. The Red Lion pub here has been a place for our family to meet for at least a hundred years. My day is fabulous, like a 24-hour cocktail party. I just like drinking. I like the feeling of being drunk. I'm not an alcoholic, but, <laughs> but I do like my glass of wine in the afternoon. <laughs> This is a part of my life, the Red Lion. Part of my life. That's really what it's about, really. Friendship, camaraderie. We're just one big happy family. Welcome to the Red Lion, the most popular pub name in Britain. Every day, over 600 Red Lions open their doors for us to quench our thirst. Excuse me. The pub is a focal point for people and communities everywhere. So we set off on a 3,000 mile journey round Britain's red lines to find out who goes there, <laughs> what gets talked about, Ooh, there's lots of seagulls out there, look, yeah. and how much gets drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Our first red line is 20 miles from Cardiff on the Welsh coast. It's Wednesday night and pretty quiet inside the pub. But all that's about to change. <laughs> These girls are members of the Newport University netball team. They say they're very well behaved on the other six nights of the week. But tonight's their big night out and Josie and Lulu are leading the way. The, the main aim of Wednesday night is to get drunk. We drink the equivalent of what most people drink in a week on a Wednesday night. We pretty much don't spend money the rest of the week so that we can go out on a Wednesday night and get wasted. Um, about once a month we do pub golf. There's nine holes. There's a specific drink for each each pub. So when we come into the Red Lion, we always, always, always have Guinness. And then, like, Sarah will say go, and we'll down them. I like to do it in one. I feel like I have something to prove. <laughs> we try and get it all done together, because the sooner we get the drink in, the sooner we can go and get another one somewhere else. Excuse me. Still cold. Come on, girlies. So what are you competing for? To get the most, most drunk. Most drunk. And who's likely to win tonight? Oh, actually, is it to get the most drunk? It's to see who can drink the most and still be standing. standing. <laughs> <laughs> most drunk, I'll probably be me. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it, though. <laughs> Everyone would be like, Josie, you were so drunk last week. I'd be like, mm-hmm. Do not worry about the fact that you, you kind of get so drunk you don't know what you do. No, because we, we always have each other. So if I'm like really, really drunk, I will always take her home. Guys, it's Valeros and the tequila shot. How much will you spend in the course of one night doing pub golf? So you're prob probably about 40, 50 quid maybe. On a, on a pub golf night. On a, yeah. And, and wouldn't you prefer to just do it a bit more gradually? I think as a student, you can't... It just seems like such a waste of money to sort of social... Not, maybe not maybe. feel the effect. <laughs> if I spend, like, 15 quid on, say, three large glasses of red wine, and then um, the next day I wake up and I'm like, oh, wow, I don't even feel it. Like, I just spent 15 quid and there's no effect. Like, my body is not suffering. What's the point? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just spent all that money for no reason. So part of the thing is spend shed loads of money so that you feel like shit the next day. Yeah, feeling like shit is definitely 
the reason it's definitely what we live for the Thursday the hangover day makes it all worth it <laughs> It is so frowned upon almost like they do these binge drinking things on television and you know don't do it and you lose all respect for yourself well you don't at all because i'm quite in control of the fact that i'm going out to get drunk so and i'm i'm okay with that so as long as i'm okay with it if you don't like it then don't look don't watch i think if you're in control of what you're doing like we are we're fully aware that we go out on a Wednesday to get absolutely yeah. and, and it annihilated. Is, it's ritual, isn't it? It's, you know, we do it, it's like a scheduled thing. It's like if you have a dance class in a week, you go to it every week and that's what you do. Well, drinking for us is like a dance class. We do it every week. <laughs> Comparing drinking to a dance class. <laughs> <laughs> My mum's going to kill me. <laughs> The netball girls only drink in their red line on a Wednesday night. But other people go to the pub much more often and for very different reasons. With over 600 red lines to choose from, we continued our journey round Britain to meet the red line regulars. I live on my own. Obviously, it's a bit lonely living on your own. Sometimes I've been home and talked to myself. You know, I mean, sometimes you go home, I can't find the keys to my house, your house, and um, I sometimes tell myself off. I go, you silly bugger, Reg, what have you done with them keys? And I go, well, I don't know, do I, Reg? And you think, well, hang on a minute, am I going mad here or what? Am I really going mad? I used to be called Reg the Hedge. The reason I was called that was because now and again, if I walked home on a Saturday night, I'd perhaps had one too many, and there's a very large hedge down my way, and a couple of times I have actually fell in it. I fell in it one time and couldn't find my way out, and that was most disturbing, to be honest, but I got there in the end. Go down to any red line and you'll find someone like Reg, the classic pub regular we've all encountered. Reg has been coming to this red line just outside Cambridge for 20 years and he seems to have taken up semi-permanent residence at the bar. I'm a self-employed carpenter. I like to think I work very hard, six days a week. Uh, always coming normally after work for a couple of beers and to see all my mates, really. How are we then, Tony? You right there? Oh, not too bad, really. Yeah, what about you, Arlene? It's really home from home, I suppose you could say, really. I live on my own. Obviously, it's a bit lonely living on your own, so it's nice to come out for a couple of hours and have a bit of company. I mean, Dave, I'll tell you something now. I am actually a personal friend of OHR's. You don't believe me, do you? You know, we don't want to live in each other's pockets, but it's just nice after a hard day's work, just come and say, how are you, mate, and all that. And that, that's basically what this pub's about. You can walk in the pub, and there's always someone who say, would you like a drink? And you always say yes. Well, yes, so it'd be rude not to. And then before you know it, you've had eight pints. Um, my round. Fuck's sake. Well, it's my up. round. Yeah. You, you haven't bought one yourself. Well, that's not quite true. It's not quite true, really, is it? You have not bought one today. You come in this pub every single day. Yeah. You talk to more or less the same people every single day yeah. for at least two, possibly three, four, even more hours, yeah? At the weekend, yes. Yeah. I mean, what on earth do you find to talk about? Few people who would walk in here would realise he's on the forefront of DNA research. There's basically three things we talk about, us men. One is sport. The other one is women. Well, that's, that's probably... We talk about that more than probably other things. And the third one is shopping. Really? Yes, we all like shopping. I don't know why. I mean, everyone thinks women do. But men, I think we all in here discuss more what we have for tea every night than women ever do. She is nice, but she's not my type. What is your type? One, what is your type? One with a pulse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> One with handcuffs. What do you see about women? Um, what type of women we fancy? I mean, my mate, he always fancies women with high-heeled boots on. I like women with short dresses on. I mean, that's just... 
And um, you talk about sex then quite a lot because that's what women think. Men talk about football, women, and sex. Is yes, that... we well, well, I do certainly, and I'm sure most of my mates do, and all. <laughs> yes, we do talk quite a bit about sex in in a nice kind of way, in a very nice kind of way. I'll tell you, she reminded me off. Obviously, I went on the James Bond movie, a Politoff or something, weren't you? Eh? When she wrapped her thighs around your throat, do you know what I mean? Hey, nice. That's what it felt like with her. I was married, um, got divorced, and now live on my own. On the top off the name was, weren't it? You do. Took me several years to get over um, the divorce, um, and then after that, you do have you do have a few few girlfriends where. It's not really love, it's just probably a um, bit of sex, if you want to put it like that, a little bit of sex on the side, which is nothing to boast about. But um, now I'm looking for the real, the real thing. True love and romance. Really? Oh, yes, oh, yes, definitely. What made you decide you wanted that? Because um, I'm getting old and lonely. <laughs> I'm writing to a young lady at the moment, actually. She, she lives in America. We're just pen pals at the moment, and I'm writing to her. And so that, that's quite exciting. But uh, I have a little bit of trouble with me reading and writing, so I'm afraid I have to have a couple of people help me write the letters with me. Now, one person who does help me is Mark, the landlord behind the bar. And because he's, he's very good at writing letters, and he, he, he wrote my very first letter for me. When we first started um, writing, she used to go, bye. But now, at the end of each letter, I put love from Reggie. And she always puts love on her letters now, and a nice little heart. So it's, it's getting quite exciting, to be honest. Are you I mean, pinning a lot on this, Reg? Well. I hate to say this, yes, I am a little bit, yeah. What do your friends see in the pub? Um, to be honest, I think most of them think I'm barking up the wrong tree, to be honest, um, and total waste of time. But hopefully, who knows, who knows, who knows? <laughs> Best friends Joan and Irene have lived in Billericay for 40 years. They were both married to journalists called Bob and were both widowed a decade ago. Now, every Tuesday and every Thursday, Joan 85 and Irene 80 wend their way to the Red Lion in the High Street. Well, we chose the Red Lion because we like the look of it, we like the people in it, they're friendly. I'm going to get the wine now, Joan. Yes, OK. We come up at 11.30 so that we can um, have the table in the window. And why so, do you like the table in the window? Well, because we see everybody going by and we, we see people we know, we give them a wave, you know, <laughs> and they wave back. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. All the Cheers. best. Oh, gosh. Is there one? Oh, yeah. red coats. Yeah. That's nice. Nice and bright. Yeah. Oh, there's lots of seagulls out there, look, Joe. Yeah, that means... Well, uh, that's the rough weather yeah, coming. Yeah, rough weather. When your husband's died, you started this new little routine, didn't you? Mm. Yes. Yeah. So why did you do that? Well, we just we said one day, why don't we go out for lunch? And it started from, from there, didn't yeah. it? And how long have we been coming here? Now? Oh, quite oh, a few. About ten, ten years. About mm. a few years, yes, isn't it? Yes. yes. It was after the Bob's died, your, wasn't your, it? Your Bob passed away before mine. Eleven, yeah. eleven years this year, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, thank lovely. you. Lovely, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, lovely. lovely, thank you. When Bob died, um, it was terrible, awful. We couldn't get over it. Um, and you just wonder how, how you can go on. But eventually you do, you get over it, and um, it takes a while. But we just decided, and we said, "All right, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go up and have lunch and that." And that's how it it happened, and it's just got into a routine now. Tuesday we come up to the Red Lion and have a bottle of wine. Then when we've finished shopping, we go back to mine and we have a couple more. And then Joan goes off staggering back off. <laughs> 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 then Wednesday she comes round to mine. 
and we have a couple of wines and then we go on to the rum and coke. Thursday we come to the red line and we have another bottle of wine. Friday she comes round to me and it's wine and rum and coke. Saturday the same and Sunday wine, rum and coke. And then if I have any Baileys, we might have a Baileys. <laughs> Is that a special treat, the Baileys? Yes, yeah, it's too expensive. And Monday you have off? And Monday I have off. <laughs> That's my day people. off. <laughs> oh dear! I can sit with my feet up then and um, just have a glass of wine on my own. So, which is nice. It's nice to do that occasionally, isn't it? Just to to be on your own. Yeah. That snow's nearly gone from there. Look. Yes, I know. I was only going to go into um, Summerfield today, but I'm not going to bother now. You don't want any drink today? No. No. I've got I've got enough. I'll get I'll get some on Thursday, some mm. some hog. The only thing is I haven't got any rum. Oh. Is she the best friend you've got? Oh yes, yeah, she's the only one I've got. <laughs> yes, yeah, she looks after me very well. I'm, I've been lost without her. Would you? Yeah. Mm. What day is it today? Tuesday. Mm. Oh, it's EastEnders tonight. Can you imagine a day, Irene, without a drink? Well, I wouldn't like it because I've got used to it, you know. But I don't think it does any harm. Not th three little glasses. That's nothing, is it? No. And I mean, I, I didn't drink when I was younger, not like some of the youngsters now. It was in my 40s before I started drinking. Right, I'll just have another sip and then... Oh, this is nice, one. Well, at our age, it doesn't matter, does no, it? No, <laughs> no. We can drink what we want. <laughs> and enjoy. Yes, yes, yes it's lovely, that's right. Yeah. Keeps you going, doesn't it? Have you had a lovely time, dear? Yes, I have, yes. We left John and Irene and travelled 250 miles north to find a much younger and very different type of friendship. Lads, listen, sir must win game today. You've got to get into your heads that you can win this game. All right, after three. One, two, three, Spurs! Just outside Rochdale, the red line here is home to the Whitworth Spartans rugby league team. Founder members Rob and Louis have known each other since school. Twinkie and rugby goes hand in hand. You, you play a rugby, you go in, you have a couple of pints and therefore afterwards you get back, you know, you, have a, you, have, you can't get back here, you start drinking games with your own team. It's all about a social thing and keeping together as a team on and off the pitch. It's about getting that all your aggression or yeah, what? Yeah, of course it is. It seems like all your stresses and all your, anything that makes you angry or anything, you can save it all for a Saturday and just take it out on there. You feel like you're right afterwards. I remember, lads, we're playing rugby league. We're not Nancy Boy soccer players. Yeah. Anybody comes up to me, chelping, waving their arms around, no problem, acting like a prima donna, yep. I'm going to come down and like a ton of bricks. In a rugby league, you've got to really think fast and think on your feet. It's a brilliant game, really. Do you love it? Oh, I love it. Really? Brilliant. You can't beat it when you just go out and just start like, smashing people and stuff. Drinking about 14 or something like that, but when we were 15, we are going to pubs. I mean, a few of us, like, straight from school and go home and, like, get your best jeans on and your best shirt and walk into a pub on a Wednesday night when there's a load of blokes who just finished work having a pint. You're looking the dog's bollocks, like, walking in. Yeah, I'm old enough. You a bit of a sideburns on and stuff. But well, that's when we started, 15, just having a few beers, and we started going out at weekends, and then just carried on and on and on and on. When you were younger, you just, like, just drinking women. just to get pissed, just, just so drunk. you could walk around. Yeah, like this on Friday night, yeah. You know. go to school the next day. Hey, were you last night? Yeah. You were well pissed. Like, yeah. Do you think it's just a British thing that we all like getting pissed? I think it seems I that think way, so, doesn't yeah. it? It does. I think it seems so. It seems that way, doesn't it? So, do you both drink as much? 
probably I said drink a little bit more. A little bit more, my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's drinking. Rob drinking includes Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Absolutely ruined on a Saturday night. Recovering on Sunday night. We'll Recovering on a Sunday morning, afternoon, and then maybe turn out if there's an Everton game and get pissed again on a Sunday night, and then recovers at work on Monday, and then he's out again and again and again. Do you drink quite a lot, Rob? I work away all the time, yeah, so not much else to do when you're working away, yeah. Do you think you drink too much? Uh, I probably I drink a lot. I drink, for, if you talk about how many units I drink up over the week, yeah, I probably do drink over, but I come out... When I come out during the week, I probably don't exceed more than three or four pints, which is all right. It's the weekend when you do binge drink, you know that isn't healthy for anybody, is it really? So if you drink twenty pints on a Saturday, it's not good for anybody. I wouldn't have thought so. No. Have you ever drunk twenty pints? Well, I think so, yeah. Probably, yeah. I'd say a good hundred pound a week at least, yeah. Do you drink at home? No, never. Really? Yeah. Well, when you spend seven nights in a pub, you're never at home anyway. You used to drink, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't like being absolutely hammered. I like being in that stage where nothing bothers you and you can just have a laugh and you're just laughing all the time and giggling and take the piss out of something and, you know, you get your confidence boost and you're, you're with all your mates and you can all, you're all having a laugh and you're all doing everything. It just, it seems to be like the catalyst to make a good time. Good night, you know, yeah. you can have, like, a place, friends, and in between it you get the beer involved and then it just all of a sudden it all clicks together. <laughs> Most of the people we met said they went to the pub for company because they didn't like drinking at home or on their own. So Red Lines Everywhere are a place not just to go for a drink, but to meet old friends or to make new ones. In a small market town in the windswept east coast of England, we found a red line where an outsider had come in and been made welcome by the regulars. Every other day at 11.55 precisely, 72-year-old Wilf now makes the short journey from his flat to the Red Lion, his new home from home. I came back to Wisbridge about four and a half years ago, having spent 42 years in London working for two French banks. And as I knew this pub, and it's a two-minute walk from my flat, this was the first place to come, obviously. I was treated as a stranger at first for obvious reasons, all country towns have a certain um, coolness towards foreigners, inverted commas, and was accepted into the fold, as it were. Yes, the people here turned out to be very nice friends. Uh, not uh, overwhelming at the beginning. It was a very slow process. How are you coping with the cold weather? Oh, uh, not too bad. It's only a two-minute walk. Well, you, when you go into town every day, the little bit shopping, is it hard for you? With your, with your, no, with other five people? minutes. Oh, last week was terrible. I come to the pub on average four times a week, lunches only. I don't like evenings now. Usually 12 o'clock until about two to half past two when they close. God, seriously. Help yourself up, because it slopes. Do you sometimes yeah. sit here? You're quite happy to Oh, yes, to quite sit. happy. I talk to Bev, you know, the lady who serves. And she's ex-London too, so a lot in common there. And she looks after me well. And we have a code for the drinks. For example, the Mr Blue is a Bombay gin. <laughs> Oh, yes, a George Melly is dark rum and coke. Number one is a Remy Martin. Number two is a Corvazier. <laughs> so do you tend to have that as your sort of final, it's final snifter? Yes, it's snifter, that's right, yes. A, is it? a tincture at the end. Is it? <laughs> yes. Are we going to halt first? I understand so. 
down the A148? Yes, the A148. When I came back in 2004, I heard a rumour about something called a kipper run. The original reason was to buy this fish and incidentally go to one or two pubs. But since then, it seems to be more of an upmarket pub crawl on the Norfolk coast, and the kippers are incidental. Well, well, bloody Mary for you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Enjoy. I just start off with the Bloody Mary. Exceptionally, I never drink before 12 o'clock normally, but that day I do have one. Then we have a full English breakfast. It is very full, plus coffees. Then we leave here about half ten, usually. This is Wilf's 11th kipper run in the last four years. He's the frail elder statesman in the midst of 15 increasingly noisy men on a minibus. All men together can be awkward sometimes. It isn't all male do, actually. The humour can be Rabelaisian from time to time, in the bus especially. They're quite funny. Iris girl phones her mum, she goes, Mum, Mum, my waters are broke. She goes, where are you ringing from? She goes, well, you fucking niggas down my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> We'd not be quite pissed by the end of it. Oh. <laughs> we start off at a halt at the feathers. I believe we had three pints each. <laughs> AB, meet me halfway. Buy a fucking ticket. <laughs> 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 then we went to Salt House, Duncow, and we had two, possibly three, I'm not quite sure. Who the fuck shit on the floor? <laughs> and then we went to the smokehouse. It took a long time to buy the fish. <laughs> Three twenty p.m. and now we've just arrived in Stifke. So how many more pubs have you got to go to? Next one is um, Thornham, the lifeboat, where hot toddies will be ordered. So is this what men together are like? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Is it? Yeah, yes. A brand new dress with balls all down the front. Every time I touch the ball, she swore I touch the cum inside me. Chairs all round, bread and cheese for supper. If another man goes with another man's wife, he's a fool if he doesn't. So what time do you think they'll be finished tonight? Arriving at Wisbridge roughly 8 o'clock, half past 8, where the landlady will have prepared in advance uh, steak and kidney pies. And more drink? Uh, of course, my dear. Um, a little tincture for the end of the evening. <laughs> Yeah. Cheers, boy. Cheers, mate. Enjoy the day. He nicked my hat. <laughs> I nicked his water stick yeah. as well. Oh, and yeah. broke it. Yeah. After 14 hours of drinking, 72 year old Wilf reluctantly called it a day. Two of his friends from the pub escorted him back to make sure he and his fish made it safely home. Our next red line is in the Scottish Borders, in a village with only 1,200 inhabitants. Tuesday night at the pub is a much needed escape from domesticity and two young children for Natalie, youngest member of the red line ladies darts team. It's pretty hectic in my house on a Tuesday night. I'm trying to get the tea organised, the dishes done before I kind of escape at the house door. The kids are, well, Liam's running to the door. Mummy, mummy, wait on me, wait on me, but no, no. I just like, I'm like a greyhound running along that street. <laughs> to get to the darts. <laughs> Relief, uh -huh. yes. Is uh -huh. it like freedom? It's freedom for a couple hours, yeah. It's nice to get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Denise is our captain. She's a mobile hairdresser. Carol, she's in a little coffee shop at Dan's. Elspeth, she's a um, classroom assistant at Berwick. Amanda, she's a teacher at Berwick. Veronica, she's the one that's driving really early in the morning, taking school kids. Tracy's a carer. Uh, me and Heather are young mummies. Alison works at a local factory at Dunn's. Don't think I've left anyone out. <laughs> and have you known all these women all your life? Yeah, I've known them all my life, yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Natalie grew up just down the road from the pub. She started drinking here aged 14, tucked away in a corner. She even found her husband in the pub. So for Natalie and most everyone in the village, the Red Lion has been an important part of all their lives. Turnside's very, very small. Everybody kind of knows everybody, or knows a friend of theirs, or a relation of theirs. Is that quite nice? It is quite nice, but then sometimes you get, it's, it's a bit too nosy. And are you quite serious about it? Oh yeah, we, we love to win, we love to win, yep. It's, it's a bit of a downer when we don't win. Mm. Natalie? On a Tuesday night, do you drink a lot? No, none of us really drink. Um, we kind of save it up for the weekend. M most of us uh, drink Diet Coke or Diet Iron Brew. It's not very exciting on a Tuesday night. Nobody can afford to lose their licence um, because everybody drives the next day as well, so and I can't get up a hangover, no way. Yay! We're not big drinkers through the week, so... Really? <laughs> yeah, I know. No. But that sort of defies the image people have of Scottish people. I know, I know. <laughs> if you get the right group of people, you can have a great laugh. Mm -hmm. Didn't need drink. The pub can be many things to many people, and it's not always just about drinking. For newly retired Dagmar, Thursday nights at the Red Lion gave her a chance for a new beginning. Well, as long as health and legs will, you know, carry us backwards and forwards, as long as the pub doesn't close down, nothing happens, quiz night will always be quiz night on a Thursday for us. Good evening and welcome to the Red Lion quiz night. In tonight's quiz, we have a picture round, name the celebrities. Dead easy tonight. And we have cryptic letters of the alphabet. I've given you the first one. I'm the bossy boots, yes. Unfortunately, I'm the one that went knocking on the doors and asked them if they wanted to join a team because it meant I could go out one night a week. So by going to the quiz night with the girls, I get both my friendship, my food, the quiz night, and a good night out. Question number one. According to legend, which dog watched over his master's Edinburgh grave for 14 years? <laughs> the only one dog I know is you <laughs> Because we live Aspendale close, we've decided to call ourselves the Aspendale Girls. General knowledge I'm pretty good at, a little bit of music, film, entertainment. Ursula is spot on with sports. Jean knows quite a lot about Australia where she used to live. Sue is very good on dingbats, anagrams, so that's the four of us. If you put your right foot in and your right foot out, what are you doing? Our biggest competitors are three policemen and they win nearly every week. I don't know where their knowledge comes from but it's way beyond better than ours. Um, and would you cheat? Absolutely. <laughs> Question number eight. After which British monarch is popular breed of dog? Anybody's I got married. Was on a farm. I had three sons. We had horses, chickens, goats. But things didn't work out. And unfortunately, when you get divorced, one of the main things that goes is the house. So I bought this little house. Two up, two down. And I got a job. And I met a lovely man called Brian. And I had that lovely time for 10 years. But then, unfortunately, Brian collapsed and died, and he was only 53. He had a heart attack. So I wanted to come back to family and friends. It's tough on your own, isn't it? It's very tough, but you've got to be a tough person to deal with it and, like, say, this is what I'm going to do. So I got on with it. How far behind were we? 38 and a half. And what was the winning? 45. 45. And what was the second? 44. 44. Well, we tried hard. We tried hard, and we're not that far behind. Obviously, I didn't want to sit at home every night looking at four walls, but it's not easy for a lady to go out in a pub on her own and sit there because you do get looked at. So it's, I like to do the quiz. I'm competitive, so it's doing that and having a drink. 
and socialising. It's a good night out. Hey, I'm a bit miffed. I think we could have done a bit better than yeah, that. Yeah, you know, there was just one or two questions that like, were, were a bit wrong, but I thought we'd have got better than 38 and a half. In the home county's commuter belt, this village pub is just 30 miles from the centre of London. Every Friday afternoon, whatever the weather, the Red Lion becomes the clubhouse and 19th hole for the local golfing fraternity. What's your score, Stevie? 38. <laughs> Yeah. Accountant John Basil and his wife Mel live in the same village as the pub and John can usually be found here most days when he's not working or out in the golf course. Is your husband a golf boar? Yes, I think he is. <laughs> I think they all are a lot of the time. Yes, I'm a golf boar. I'm also um, an allotment boar. I'm a boar. What is it men like about golf so much? Um, exercise, fresh air. Now, you can laugh, but yes, we do actually like the exercise. It's the only exercise I personally get. This, uh, this diet you're on, John, you must tell me about this diet you're on. It's a seafood one. <laughs> See the food and eat it. <laughs> It is an escape where we all get together and boys will be boys. Some of the, the banter and the fun that we have amongst each other, a lot of people would call juvenile, um, but no one takes offence and we are quite rude to each other, as children probably are. He likes to think he's a good golfer. He knows all the rules, he knows all the books, the techniques and everything, and so he'll sit for hours afterwards talking about his round of golf. But he's dreadful. But he's dreadful. <laughs> I think it's quite good for, for men to, to have their own space and, and let off steam, much like little boys being sent out to play, if you liked. He's out from under my feet. I've got the day to do what I want to do, go shopping, whatever. Um, and um, I know he's having a good time, and I'm having a good time too. Now in the tree. Yeah. Friday's is total male preserve. Whilst we're on the golf course, and for the first um, three quarters of an hour to an hour when we get back to the pub. Come on, Norman, I'm ready for the time. Norman, Norman, two of us are getting thirsty. How much do I drink in an ordinary week? Um, I suppose Monday to Thursday lunch times I'll have a couple of pints. Uh, evenings, uh, two or three. And then Fridays, it, nothing at lunchtime because we're on the golf course, uh, but four, five in the evening. Yeah. Over a weekend, probably nine, ten pints. <laughs> <laughs> we did that all day. Do you ever worry about how much you drink or not? I think it's too late in life to worry about how much I drink. Well, we're sharing a tour. Uh, yeah. Have you lost your bitch? Yeah. It's not our entire social life, but the main nucleus is definitely uh, based around the pub. I can't imagine life without the Red Lion. It's uh, superb. That's why I say I'm going to be taken out in my box. He missed two at the end from that, because he'd already worked out if he got led this with three points on the last two holes, he wouldn't he'd get a shot back. Yeah, absolutely right. Many of us like spending time in the pub, and some of us probably spend rather longer there than we should. But no one puts in more hours at the bar than the landlord. And the risk is that the pub can take over their life completely. Hello, Robert. Would you describe yourself and what you do, Mr. Innkeeper? <laughs> ah, very much, very much so. Um, the 
I had brought this um, in for a purpose in, in, in my life. Uh, maybe to give something back, maybe to make somebody happy, and to in, enjoy myself. Now, gentlemen, good morning. Robert's been running his award-winning Red Lion in the depths of the Kent countryside for 15 years. Inside is like an old curiosity shop, and the pub attracts customers from miles around. Tony, good morning. How are you doing, Robert? Very wonderful. And at the heart of this successful business is Robert, the archetypal eccentric landlord, supping his beer round the clock. I'm happy. Excuse me. And making everybody else enjoy themselves. Hello. Hi, my darling. How are you? Yeah. Still a virgin. Good what, girl. you or me? Oh, well, we'll go for it. <laughs> You're not going to have a quick one with me? I've always been a, a lovable drinker. It's not arduous. It is absolutely such fun. I'll have a glass of wine, please. Red yeah, wine. Uh, Give us a hint. I don't know. Um, Pinot Grigio. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah lovely. Something a bit sparky. You think yeah. you're on the Absolutely. Italian uh, Riviera. Like me, really. Being here when people are all laughing and happy, it does me a lot. Of, it's like taking, not that I've ever done it, but like taking marijuana twice a day. But my marijuana is the people who walk through the door <laughs> and a quick shot. Quite a lot of pub owners and, and landlords and barmaids that we've met, they say they won't drink when they're working. This is obviously not a principle that you've embraced. <laughs> oh, lovely. Um... But you do drink quite a lot. In moderation. <laughs> no, I, I probably do, yes. How many sharpeners a day do you have, Robert? Uh, quite a leading question. I, th I would say I probably consume 15 pints of beer. Of a day? So, yeah, so you're talking about one and a quarter pints an hour. When do you have your first one, then? O'clock. Eight o'clock. Well, I'd say that, yes. I can't, I, I can't tell a lie. You can't get much fresher than that. Always look at its bottom. <laughs> you know it. You yeah. Know it. No, that's brilliant. Normally, Robert works at the pub from 7.30 in the morning till midnight, seven days a week. But a month earlier, he'd been admitted to hospital with a collapsed lung. That three-week stint in hospital with a collapsed lung, did it not make you stop and think, <laughs> Just for a minute, maybe I should drink less, smoke less. Well, I don't drink an awful lot, and I don't smoke an awful lot. Um, so it did, didn't make me even think. Robert, that... do you don't think for a minute you might be in denial slightly? Uh, avidly. Avidly. Without sans doute. What would you like to eat? I would like the squid and then the lamb, please. Uh, may I say, what a good choice. It's Thanks rather like... That, no. A little kid of one being brought up with my... I don't think it happens today, with a dummy in its mouth. So I want to be Peter Pan still with my dummy. Best have another sharpener. Landlords like Robert and pubs like the Red Lion are uniquely British institutions. But the pub is under threat, and six are closing every day. If the local pub closes, we stand to lose, not just somewhere to have a drink, but a cornerstone of British life. Well, it's, it's 
just been part of our lives. Yes, really, all, all, all always... through our marriage, it's we, yeah. we've lived here, um, and uh, it's it's just been the focal point of of, uh, of the area and of our lives. So how do you mm. feel now? It's shut. Well, devastated, really. It's. Uh, it's it's gone and uh, we've, we've uh, haven't got anywhere to go now really. Tell me what life is like without the red lion. Very boring at the moment. We've got nowhere to go. Um, our Saturday nights are really finished as far as that goes. Is that the end of life as you knew it? Well, yes, it is. Well, it is yes because we've done it for a year. Oh, gosh. 40, 50 years, haven't we? Yeah. Well, we've got to the stage now where we sit at home at night and we, we've come, become two miserable old no. OAPs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we stay and watch telly. How often did you come to the pub? Was oh, it just... Once a week, once a week. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no. Honestly? Yeah, honestly. No, um... At least six <laughs> nights a week. <laughs> Probably... <laughs> Two or three times a week. Oh, it was more than that, <laughs> Bill, you fibber. <laughs> uh, no. Come on, tell as me. As often as ever we could. We, we, but Saturday nights was our main night. We were like uh, children, in a way, excited about going on a Saturday night. There's been a red line in the tiny hamlet of Longdon Common for over 200 years. One day last October it was open, the next it was closed. The new owner has no plans to reopen the pub. For the villagers, it's the end of an era. Well, the women always sit together and the men always stand by the bar and it's, it's always been like that. We used to go our separate ways and, and they would sit and then the only communication was when they wanted another drink. <laughs> Saturday nights would you come here? We wouldn't miss. Hardly ever. Hardly ever, unless we were ill. But we, we tried not to be ill on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> we were ill on Sundays. <laughs> Sundays. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday were a bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> we were fine again by next Sunday, <laughs> weren't we? <laughs> Uh, we used to do things together, go on holiday together, and do all sorts of things. But once the pub closed, I mean, the momentum of getting together stopped as well. We don't, we don't meet now like we used to. So, mm. in a sense, you've not just lost your pub; mm. you've lost some contact. Really. Oh yes, 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 yes. We've lost that point of contact where, um, you know, we can uh, form a closeness with the people around us. 